Hello, welcome back. Last year, I made this folding workbench for outdoor working when it was too hot to work in the loft. This summer, I have made various additions to this, which has developed it into an outdoor woodworking station. As I've released various videos over the summer, I've received lots of questions which I will endeavour to answer during this video that amalgamates the total build process and also give you the dimensions which is one of the most asked questions. The base was cut from a pile of inch by four timber, regularised at the planer, and each piece received a quarter inch groove at the saw before being marked out to its exact length. Once it had been cut to its exact length, I could continue the grooving to the ends at the router table. I then inserted pocket holes into the rails, and with the aid of some plywood as a loose tenon, three sides of the frame was put together ensuring the components were square as the glue set. Once I had three sides to the frame, I could mark out the plywood panels that was going to sit in there. This project was the first for my Festool track saw. The panels were glued into the groove and the fourth side added. The larger back panel was made in the same way. Two inch steel butt hinges were applied to all the folding elements and were fitted in such a way that the two end panels folded inwards. I keep meaning to change these hinges for the type where I can remove the pin and take the old frames together for easier storage. I then turned my attention to making the front frame of additional 3 by inch timber and if I'm totally honest with you, I made a mistake by putting the groove in the front of the frame. So here I got over the problem by loose tonguing these pieces in. These holes are set at 100mm centres and was set before I understood the joy of 96mm centres. So confirming the size of the base, the whole thing is just over 600mm or around about 24 inch wide and is 38 inch long, about 970mm. It stands 790mm high, including the 10mm on, and the distance between the two rails is 720mm. The top rails are a nominal 4 inch, round about 95mm, and all the rest of the rails are 2 inch, around about 45mm. The four side panels are 275mm, which is about 10 and 3 daughter inches and when it's in the closed position for storage, it is 100mm or just under 4 inch thick. The original top was just a piece of 18mm MDF that I drilled some 20mm holes in. For version 2, I wanted to make the top in two parts, so I laminated together two 12mm pieces of MDF. These were cut so they overlapped each other by 100mm, and I used the original top to route out the mounting lugs underneath. The top was made slightly oversized, and then I mapped it out with my path guide jig before cutting it to the final size. Once I had the made tricks of the 3mm holes, I used these to centralise the router plate, stuck some MDF to the top the size of the plate and then routed out the hole. Made some nosings out of inch by 2 and with the aid of the biscuit jointer glued them to the edge of the workbench top. With my Triton router I routed in the grooves for the three T-tracks. The front one is much larger than the two sides one so it can take some slider rails. Once the front and back nosings were dried, it was a case of fitting the small end. This has a much longer nosing applied, so it hooks over the front and back nosing and creates a more stable connection. It is also held in place with two threaded inserts and 6mm bolts. To level the router plate, I use these Craig router plate levelers. And I use these so I can level plates of different thicknesses. Now it was time to turn some of the 3mm holes into the 20mm dog holes. And to do this, I use my path guide jig. I did not drill out all the holes because I wanted to keep some for reference for other items I wanted to fix to the end of the bench. I ran a chamfer around the perimeter of the bench top 
To protect the top, I applied a couple of coats of quick drying varnish. And finally, with an offcut, I made a sacrificial piece to sit where the saw cuts. Because, as well as routering, it offers me the opportunity to mount the bench dog, fence and square that supports the Festool track saw. So, how big is this top? Well, the whole thing is 1200mm long, and it's almost 650mm wide. The router insert is cut 255mm from the front and 260mm from the side. The front T-Track is routed in 110mm from the front and the other two are 155mm and 655mm from the end. The start of the sacrificial insert is 860mm and is 100mm wide. The tail end is 245mm and its nosing is 708mm. Now I had the top finished, the first thing I wanted to do before I properly used the bench was to make two quick and cheap accessories that would help protect the bench top and prolong its life. The first of these accessories was a support for the end of the Festool guide rail. This is so I had a constant curve depth as I ran down the piece and didn't cut a huge trench out of the bench top. This is made from 9mm MDF and is just 200mm square routed with a couple of 6mm slots that accept two T-bolts that sat in the groove at the front of the bench. Inch by two with an 8mm dowel locate the front of the rail. The second accessory is even easier to build. It's just two 1.2m lengths of inch by two drilled with holes so I can clamp it to the bench and protect the bench top when cutting or use as a cantilever to overhang the bench end and extend my working surface. The holes are drilled with my path guide jig so the holes marry up nicely with the holes in the bench top. Next, it was time to turn my attention to make a router fence so I could properly use the router that was set in the middle of the bench. And this was made from 18mm plywood. All the components were cut from a single 2 foot by 3 foot sheet with my Festool track saw which I also used to cut out the mouth of the fence. During the series of these videos I used as a prop this green and yellow toy that belongs to my Hungarian Vizsla Gracie. My wife and I always wondered what this toy was and thanks to one of my viewers we now know it's called Fimbo. And talking of toys during the making of this fence I took delivery of my Festool Domino and I used the dominoes to fasten all this fence together. The T grooves that form the sliding mechanisms and also are there to mount feather boards to was all cut on the router table using a small T-slot cutter. And if you think my workshop is very small, here I'm working on the step at the side of the conservatory that measures just 4 foot by 3 foot because it was the hottest weekend of the year and it was absolutely scorching in the sunshine. To help protect the fence, I coated it in quick drying varnish and for the movable parts, wire willed it smooth and applied some wax. And to make a dust spot on the rear of the fence, I used this large chamfer bit to cut 45 degrees on a piece of plywood, drilled an hole for the centre of the vacuum cleaner and then glued it in place. It is really nice to have a proper functional route table. The fence was made with the dimensions that fitted both this table and the one I have in the small loft workshop. The fence is 700mm long, it stands 165mm high and each part of the movable fence is 345mm by 112 The Craig router plate lives in my large router table in the small loft workshop. 
and here I wanted to make three router plates specifically for this bench. So I cut three blanks from offcuts of MDF and shaped them so they would fit inside the hole that the Craig plate had left. Each plate needed to marry up with the four mounting holes within the Craig leveler plate. The beauty of the levelers is I can level up any thickness of insert. The first insert was a small MFT section that would complete the holes in the middle of the bench. The second insert was made to mount my Triton router and needs four holes, two for the mounting bolts, one for the cutter and one for the height adjusting lever. The last plate houses this aluminium insert that mounts my small Makita Palm router and for this I needed to construct a small jig in order to router out the hole. These two inserts give me an opportunity to quickly change out between quarter and half inch cutters. The inserts are made from 18mm MDF and are 300mm long and 235mm wide. The reason I made this removable end of the bench was so I could fit other parts into it and the first thing I wanted to build was a small tail end vise. I wanted this vise to be quite sturdy so I could hammer and chisel on it. So to add density I laminated up a series of pieces of 12mm plywood, each piece being quite irregular because it has to cut itself around the geometry of the bench. It took a few days to laminate the pieces piece by piece and let them dry overnight. Once I'd finally built up the laminations, I ran them over the router table to trim off the edges flush. The jaws of the vise are made from inch by three softwood. The inner one being notched over the end of the bench where it will be mounted to the bench and is dominoed to the edge of the plywood buildup. The good thing about complicated glue ups is, it provides plenty of times for a cup of tea. And there's nothing like a refreshing cup of tea when it's 35 degrees. Mounting the outer jaw onto the vise was probably the most complicated part of the entire build. On a reflection I should have bought a longer bolt with a bigger diameter. Probably something like a 200mm long bolt with a 12mm diameter would have been better. I was trying not to stay down the route of spending too much money here. I could have just gone out and bought a Moxham Vice kit that was probably going to cost me about £80. I think I spent something like £2.60 on the bolts. I eventually worked out a way of sinking the nut into the vise by the means of plunging a domino cut into the top. I also inserted a row of domino cuts across the top so I could insert a domino to use it as a small bench dog. To tighten the vise I made a couple of small knobs from some softwood cut out of the pillar drill and then just shaped at the bobbin sander. And in the main video I couldn't resist making a couple of knob jokes. This project was also the first time I used two part epoxy glue. And I have to say, even though it says dries in five minutes on it, I found that not to be the case. So this little vise only has a gripping capacity of about an inch and a half. But since I use relatively thin stock, it's probably good for what I need. And I always have my bench bolt to fall back on if I have wider stock. The final part of the bench, at least for this year, was to make a coping jig slash tenoning jig. I seem to cut a lot of tenons for jobs I seem to do and I also seem to make a lot of panel doors so the coping jig and the tenoning jig come in really handy. To cut the T-slots I picked up a dedicated cutter from Axminster to Tools which I think is a really good investment as it gives me lots of opportunities to make further jigs. I've already made a couple for the table saw and I'm planning to make at least another two. The base of this jig was made from a piece of 18mm MDF which I cut to 18 inch square. I then inserted the grooves with my router table until I ran out of bench capacity and then swapped to my Triton router in its slider adapter to complete the rest of the cuts. 
I then needed a fence for the rear of the jig and at first I thought I would mount my fence dog fence to the back of the jig but then I realised that there was a risk of colliding with the router cutter damaging both the cutter and the fence. So I decided to make a dedicated fence from a piece of inch and a half by two, inserted a T-slot in there so I could make a little plywood fence and also cut away a part of the fence to take a piece of inch plain timber that I could use for a sacrificial insert to use when I'm making coping cuts. I use the dominoes to insert four oval slots to put a pocket hole screw in to fix this sacrificial layer in. All in all, with the T-slots, the fence, the stop and the sacrificial insert, this jig is extremely useful and it will get a lot of use. And in a nutshell, that's the potted history of this bench. I've really enjoyed making this in the garden over the summer, but for now it's going to be stored away over the winter in the small loft workshop where it will emerge hopefully next spring and by then I may even have another couple of ideas of how to expand its use. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.